Hello, and welcome back to Quantitative Reasoning Online. Today's videos will be a tutorial on working on the, on the preview assignment. So let's go there and let's give it a try. So let's go to preview. Okay, let's go to the preview assignment. And it looks like today we're working on depreciation. And then we'll do some questions and see how it goes. So depreciation. Let's see what is depreciation? As usual, we gotta fit the window. So in this here class, depreciation, looks like we're going to estimate the output value of a given input value using a graph. Okay, We'll calculate the output value um, using an equation, and then we'll find absolute and percent error. So it looks like uh, some graph reading, some algebra, and some, some equations there. So let's see. In the class, you will need to be able to find additional data points based on given data. Okay. The tutorial for the preview of Lesson 9, Part A begins here. So introduction. The graph below shows the value of a storage building when the building is 4 years, 5 years, 11, and 12 years old. So here's, here's 4. Is 5, 11, and 12. All right, that's the data we have here. Uh, let's do an observation. Looks like by looking at the graph, it looks pretty straight line ish. If I can draw a straight line. That looks like a pretty much straight line. So keep that in mind. Keep that thought in mind when you're seeing a graph with some with some um, scatter, uh, basically a scatter plot. <clears throat> what kind of a line fits fits into it? Okay. Oh, there we go again. Uh, let's assume the value decreases by here's here's an important word by a constant amount each year. No, basically, a constant, a constant depreciation. Also known as straight line. Depreciation. Gee, I wonder why they call it a straight line. I may, have to, I may be thinking too much about this, which means the points must be collinear. Collinear lies on the same line. <clears throat> and we draw a line. Excellent. So use the graph to estimate the value of the storage building at year eight. Okay, let's go. Okay, we got our collinear line. I drop my pen. Here's year eight. Let's go up at that point, and let's go over. So I would guesstimate it's about halfway between fifteen and twenty thousand. So I probably would say about seventeen thousand five hundred dollars at the eight-year point, give or take a hundred or so dollars. See what they say. Uh, you can tell this between 15 and 20. Is it close to 15, 20, or neither? That's pretty ambiguous. And I say it's definitely about halfway between, roughly. Okay. So let's see. Review the equ uh, view the prop. Enter your response. An equation. Excellent. 
can be found that will model the value of the building. And here's the equation it came up with. Basically, the value is $30,050 minus $1,500 per year. So here's our variable. Of course, that would be the x-axis. And let's use the equation to determine the value of the storage building in year 8. Okay. Easy. Not too hard to do. Value. 30,050 minus 1,500. So, this is dollars per year. This is dollars. This is years. So when I look at that 1500 times how much time, we're left with dollars. So what's 1500 times 8? Now well, let's see. 500 times 8 is 4,000 plus 8 is $12,000. So it looks like it, it should be eighteen thousand and fifty. Remember, eyeballing the graph, uh, I think it's says seventeen thousand five hundred. If I remember correctly, so they were close. So enter your response: eighteen thousand and fifty. Check answer. Yep, sure enough. And here's the math that we did. Sure, my answer, of course, is also down here. Sure, correct answer. So, using equation is just a quick way of doing a, a basically turning a graph line into a into a uh, variable um, straight line formula. Uh, introduction to question three. Recall that you introduced the concept of depreciation, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> in, the next lesson, in the next lesson, you will need to know some additional vocabulary. Uh, before attending class, go to the Internal Revenue Site Service website and review, read an overview about the important business concept. Okay, so how do we get that? <clears throat> so let's just highlight, copy, paste, and here's a hint. Do not get that decimal point. That Period. Not part of the website address. So let's do a copy. Paste and go. And here we are. So here's the site that we're talking about. <coughs> Not the most up-to-date one, so it's a little historical in some details. Um, this is the site you want to be looking at. There you go. Uh, some important terms as you read material. You may need to do a search for the meaning in some other articles. Good practice to look up concepts that you don't understand. Term meaning of the term mentioned in part A to E of the next two slides and bring your definition to class. Tell you what, uh, make sure you just have them written down in your, in your notes someplace. <coughs> and it'll be discussed in the um, one of the follow on uh, textbook, uh, workbook sessions. Okay. So let's do that now. Uh, Part A to C, refer back to website, which is here. Okay, what are some items that are depreciable? This is at least three items mentioned in the website. So three items that we can depreciate. So let's take a look. Uh, okay, kind of what depreciation is. Okay, here we go. <coughs> That's right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Most types of tangible property, except land, such as buildings, machinery, vehicles, furniture, and equipment, are depreciable. 
Um, intangible properties, patents, copyrights, computer software is the, are depreciable. Um, in over tax rates without depreciation, you must own the property um, that's, you, that you're trying to depreciate. Okay. So let's go over these three building, machinery, vehicles. Building, machinery, vehicles. What they say? Uh, two items mentioned are buildings and machinery. Now you need to find three more. Say what? Okay, three more. That's hard to do. I got vehicles. So furniture and equipment. All right. Part B. What is the definition of the class life of an asset? So, what is the definition of the class life of an asset? Well, let's see. Isn't let's go back to the publication and scroll down, and we see. Oh, here we go. A taxpayer must identify several items to ensure proper depreciation, including class life of the of the asset. And it says nothing more than that. Ooh. So let's go do some more searching. So I'm just going to do a copy, paste, and okay. What is the definition of class life of an asset? Let's take a look. Okay, it's the useful life of a type of property as defined by the alternative depreciation system, the general depreciation system. Okay, Basi it's basically is, is the useful life. Okay. In other words, how many years will you depreciate it over? Is what they're asking, is what they're saying. So class life, useful life, One word. Life of an asset. How many years it will be depreciated over? See what they say. The class life of asset is the number of years over which the asset will be depreciated. Okay. Uh, now, oh, now if you refer back to the website, you find the missing portion of the definition. Okay. Again, the, what goes in here, will, asset will be depreciated. Oh, what's the definition of the of the basis of an asset? Okay, so definition of the basis of an asset. Let's go back to the website, <clears throat> see what it has to say. And not a whole lot. I'm not a tax expert, so I'm not going to be searching through all these here um, sites. So let's just do another search. Basis of an asset. There you go. Uh, basis is generally the amount of the capital investment in property for tax purposes. Use your basis to figure depreciation. Uh, basically, basis is, is, is your purchase cost. What did it cost you to acquire? The base of asset is its cost to you. Okay. So, what is the basis of an asset? Um, basically, that ah, costs to you to acquire. Simply, what was the, what was the initial purchase cost? 
purchase a vehicle for, for $25,000, one of the basis of the assets would be $25,000. Um, the basis of an asset is, is initial cost. <clears throat> so, get items that are depreciable. So what are the building costs, what are the machinery costs, what are the vehicle costs, the furniture, equipment. Okay. Uh, class life of an asset is number of years over which the asset would be depreciated. And the basis of an asset, asset is its initial cost. IRS Depreciation Code 101. Okay. Uh, Part D, refer back to the IRS website as needed. What's the definition of the salvage value of an asset? Uh, wrong button. Oh, that's the right one. Salvage cost. Uh, what's some of these other sites? <clears throat> Depreciation. AMT. Yeah, this is too hard. Too much. Too much work. This is what it is. Salvage cost. Value of an asset. <clears throat> well, salvage value is the estimated book value of an asset at the depreciation is complete, based on what a company expects to receive in exchange for the asset at the end of its useful life. So definition of salvage value of an asset. Okay, the salvage value is what the asset is worth when it's at the end of useful life. Okay. Could be nothing. Okay. I mean, you could depreciate. You could depreciate. Um, uh, you, you depreciate over the over its period of life. <clears throat> over its life, um, of value of life. You could depreciate on zero, it could depreciate down to have still some money left, some value left that you can sell, sell it for. And what is the definition of the depreciable basis of an asset? Well, the depreciable basis of an asset is the cost of the item minus, oops, Depreciate base of an asset is the cost of the item minus something. Let's find out what that is. Uh, depreciation basis is the amount of fixed asset cost that can be depreciated over time. The amount of the actual cost of an asset minus the estimated salvage value at, at the end of its useful life. The appreciable base of an asset the cost of the, of the item minus the, okay, it's kind of worse for that thing, minus the estimated salvage value, ah. minus the Estimated salvage value. So you so if you acquire a twenty five thousand dollar vehicle, you depreciate and at the end of its useful life, there's still five thousand dollars of salvage value left. That means what you can depreciate is your acquisition cost, or the 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 basis of your asset, the basis minus salvage cost. So twenty five thousand minus five thousand means you can depreciate over its lifetime of use, usable lifetime of twenty thousand dollars. Wrong button. Oh, that's it. All right. Interesting.
All right. All right. Oh, so math now. Absolute errors just between the approximate value. They're referring to this guy here. Absolute error is difference between the approximate value and the calculated value of a data point. Oh, my mistake. Absolute error is between approximate and the calculated value and a data point. So here's your absolute error. Now, percentage error is we take that absolute error and divide it by the calculated value. This between approximate value and calculated value. Approximate value, calculated value. So, absolutes. Divided by calculated value. The same thing as those two. So it's just, simple, just knowing um, what you think it is or what it actually is by what it actually is. So find the absolute error of your estimate. This is going back to the first graph. Remember we estimated 17,500 Calculate was 18,050. So this is the estimates. This was calculated. So my absolute error was what's the equation? Estimated minus calculated. And that gives, gives us what? <clears throat> uh, looks like a minus $550. Okay. Again, the answer would vary if you estimate $18,050. Now, percent of error. It's going to be the absolute over calculated. Yeah, calculated substantially compared. So let's do 550 divided by 18,050 for a 0.030. .03 5, I multiply that by 100%, that gives me, oops, minus, gives me minus Five oh divided by eighteen thousand fifty times it by hundred. That guy looks way low. Yeah, they're off by a decimal point. They're off by a decimal point. It should be oh point oh oh two seven seven or zero point two eight. <laughs> Got him. Okay, low divergence here. Gee, how has that never happened before? <clears throat> okay, so absolute error estimate minus calculated. So I got my absolute error. Percent error, take that absolute error, divide it by the calculated value. Um my, my number is negative, so I actually was low. I was low. 
about only about three percent by eyeballing it off the graph. Oh, and and end of our tutorial. See how confident you can estimate the output. And how pick a number off a graph. I'm pretty confident. Uh, calculate the output value given an equation. Pretty confident. And finding absolute percent error. I'm pretty confident. So, next thing is, and this is what we did. We looked at graphs, took a value, uh, gave an equation, find the value, did some sidebar into the world of IRS definitions, and then we found absolute percent error. And that's the next, that's the next part. So, with that being done, The interactive tour is done, and I shall close out this video and see you shortly in looking at the questions. I'll see you shortly.